I haven't even gotten to the real strange part. Hi, my name is Ifa Labi and welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we are going to talk about a show that I didn't think I would like, a show that I didn't even know was on my radar, Lovecraft Country. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of horror movies or horror books or horror anything. I, I don't understand why I'd read or watch something that is designed to scare me. Lovecraft Country follows Atticus Freeman who is a war veteran. He comes to search for his missing father, Montrose, and his search for his father leads him through the segregated Jim Crow America. And he goes with his uncle, George, and he goes with his friend who becomes his lover, Letitia. I'll say this, when I read the synopsis for Lovecraft's Country, they really kept so much out of it because reading the synopsis, you would think that you're going to watch like just a very normal show. Then the first episode happens and you're like, what is this I am watching? Because it pairs actual monsters with human beings and monsters. And you would think that in a show that has so many monsters and magic and witchcraft and just a lot of insaneness, those are going to be the ones that are going to be terrified of. But then the real villains are human beings. The one thing I would say about Lovecraft Country is that if you really want to understand what the show is about, I would advise that you listen to the companion podcast, which is the Lovecraft Country Radio, because the podcast gives such a layered background to what you're watching on the screen. One of the writers from the show hosts the podcast and then she includes references to the show so you, you are able to understand it better. Now let's get into the show proper. Atticus looks for his father in this very scary place for black people in America. And through his search for his father, he finds out that he is a descendant of a Braithwaite who was a slave owner and also a magic practitioner. Every episode has a focus on one person and the focus on how that one person's journey affects everybody around them. This show does so many commentaries on how we relate to a family, on how we relate with religion, on how we relate to society as a whole, on how we even relate to the government. Because we see so many people in places of authority who are supposed to know better become like very disturbing people. When the show started, they set up these three people as the main characters, which was George, Atticus, and Letty. And spoiler alert, George dies. And when he dies, I'm like, why did they make one of the main person die? And I like them for that because they killed a major person. Mwah. You can't want more than that. Each of the characters, even though they are the protagonists, even though they are our heroes, as we are following them on their journey, they are not perfect people by any chance. And that is real life because People are messed up. People make certain mistakes that will baffle you. People make certain decisions that are very head scratching, but they are very human. And that is one thing that I like about it because even when Atticus, he goes off saying that he's going to look for magic, he's also going to practice magic so that he will protect his own, you, you are able to relate to that need to protect oneself and one's family in a society that does not want you there. And we also see colorism at play in with how Letitia relates with her sister Ruby. Ruby is a gem. Ruby is a goddess. Ruby is just amazing. And we see that interplay between the both of them and how there's so much push and pull and how their relationship also influenced by the society at large. If you're going to watch Lovecraft's Country and you're very squeamish, please don't watch it because in the first episode, once again, they are literal shoguths, which are basically fish-like creatures with a thousand eyes on their body. And that is weird and creepy on its own. And it just goes on from there. One of the very interesting people, though, in Lovecraft Country is Christina Braithwaite, who is this white woman in this male-dominated world. That is for her. But what's very interesting is that they juxtapose her character being this white woman who feels like the men are slighting her in the backdrop of black people who are even slighted by the whole world at large. Her problem of being like the men are, is like, no, hold on. Yes, the men are sidelining you, but the black people in the background don't have access to anything. And she also uses the black people. That conversation is actually quite interesting because it kind of brings into question, you know, people who are allies. And how much of an ally are they truly? 
you know, apart from the fact that the storyline is so layered, apart from the fact that the storyline just really speaks to a part of you that just wants to be understood, it speaks to a part of you that just wants to, you know, relate with your family. Because when you look at Atticus's relationship with Montrose, right from the beginning, you want to hate Montrose because he is annoying, because he's irritating, because he beats his son. But then you go into the backstory of Montrose and you actually feel for him. We are all not black or white. We all have various shades that are very, like, we can empathize with whilst calling you out on your trash that you do. Montrose isn't like my favorite person in the show, but I kind of understand where his everything comes from because he's living in a society that he can't be himself. And like, that's very sad. But one of my favorite episodes actually was Hippolyta's episode, which is titled I Am where Hippolyta goes on this quest to figure out who she is as a person, where she goes on this quest to question the society in which she's in, where she goes on this quest to question the fact that, hold on, wait a minute, I am so many, like I'm a multifaceted person, so why is it that I'm always being put into this box of being a person? Because I can be an adventurer, I can be a, a, a warrior, I can be a mother, I can be a wife, I can be all those things. But why is it that we are always being put to fit into one box just because it is what everybody expects us to be? And I really enjoyed that episode because I said that episode was a love letter to anybody, especially to women who feel like they have to be just one person, who feel like they can't juggle this and that, who feel like they have to choose. Because think about it, a lot of people, i.e. men, when it comes to choosing certain things, they are able to just choose it at the, like they are able to choose themselves at the drop of a hat but if you're a woman you have to feel like oh you have to choose your family or you have to choose your your partner or you have to choose your children you know and sometimes it's very frustrating especially when you want to discover the world you know the whole new world nobody is one person like nobody fits into just one mold one frame we all have different interests and we should be able to pursue that interest with support from the people around us because the same way I would go out of my way to support anybody in my life, I mean, I would expect that same support back. Lafka Country is very brilliant in everything. It's brilliant in even the way it talks about imperialism. Because in one of the episodes, they are in South Korea and how the Americans went there and said they are going to liberate the country from communism and I posted a picture that it's interesting how you be in your country living your life and some people will come from somewhere and be like oh you are being oppressed let us free you and you're there and you're like wait hold on how, why are you why are you freeing me from what, what's happening what's that and I like that question it asked about American imperialism and that South Korea episode was such a great question of that because even though it, it literally introduced us to a kumiho it also brought out to the mind that what actually makes us a monster? Are we monsters because of how we see ourselves or are we monsters because of how the people who are outside see us? One of the best things about Lovecraft Country is that it incorporates so many real life situations in telling the story. Even the photos, you know, the, there are these amazing photos of Gordon Parks that the show actually incorporates in telling the story. And I appreciate that so much. I appreciate all the little you know, the books, it drops. And I appreciate the fact that the things that happened in 1950, it's not like, okay, this is a magical show, so we are going to be far removed from the reality. It's still very much grounded in reality, but we still see all these historical events that defined black America. At the time that the show is set, a lot of African countries haven't gained independence. And it's actually also interesting because you see, how the 1950, the black Americans in 1950 were fighting to have basic rights. And at the same time, the African people were also fighting for independence. I've come to the end of this video. And I'd say this for anybody that's interested in watching Lovecraft Country. It's scary, okay? And not just the monsters that make it scary. It's scary in the fact that you realize that a lot of things that that is set in that era that you think that oh those are the 1950s it's past and gone you realize that they are still happening in 2020 all around us we read stories of people that are going through very stupid racist things and you go like how are we still fighting these same battles how are we still having these same conversations because year after year 
decade after decade, we can't continue having these conversations. We need to move past it or we need to f be better, but we are not. It's a horror television show, but it has so much heart and it has Letitia fucking Lewis, who is the fashionista of the show, who is very amazing. And there are so many beautiful set pieces in the show and the show is just, it's very close to my heart. My name is Ifa Labi. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have seen Lovecraft Country, let me know what your favorite episodes are. Let me know what your favorite moments were. A lot of my favorite moments involve Atticus and Letty because the chemistry is sizzling. It's hot, it's fire. Fire emoji, a thousand ones. So anyways, let me know what your favorite parts of the show are in the comments down below. My name is Ifa Labi once again. I'll see you in my next video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Mwah.